Hello, I'm Tom Robinson and I've worked in and around spraying crops for over 40 years. Water should be clean and free of all pollutants. Monitoring of water highlights there are a variety of pollutants present, which sometimes includes crop protection products. Point source contamination accounts for between 50 and 80% of pesticide pollution in surface water. The good news is point source pollution can be eliminated by proactive management. Within this programme, we're going to identify the key sources of point source pollution and, with the help of two top operators, Ian Robertson and John Martin, we will look at their techniques and tips for minimising pollution while getting the maximum out of their spray days. We will include new technologies at each stage of the spraying operation that can further help reduce point source pollution while increasing accuracy and efficiency of operation. Let's first hear from John, who faces some fairly unique challenges with his farm. The situation we have is we are in a catchment sensitive area for Pool Harbour and we're in a class one soil protection zone for two miles down the road that way. We've got watercress beds and one mile that the other side of the spray and filling area, we have got a main borehole. So we're in a class one soil protection zone and in catchment sensitive farming reference to Pool Harbour. So that puts us in quite a vulnerable position. We knew we had to do something because what we were doing was filling up on hard standing and if there was going to be an accident there was no chance of catching everything before it rubbed off into groundwater and so causing a potential problem. What action did you take? The first thing we did was accept we had to do things better and then we contacted the various people we thought we need to do. We had an idea what we wanted to do but before we spent any money or did anything we went and talked to the people in catchment sensitive farming and put our plans to them what we actually wanted to do. In my mind I thought I wanted a smallish bonded area and a biofilter to deal with any strips or spills or rainwater that landed onto the spray filling area. Went to them and they said because of where we are they wouldn't approve anything of what we were going to do like that and so they said you can't put anything in the ground because you're in a soil protection zone so it's got to be above ground so therefore a bio bed is out of the question but a biofilter would be very good. So that limits the amount of water you can put through it. So therefore, it was going to have to be in a building. And I said, well, my budget's not going to go towards a building. But they said, no, nope, that's fine. We'll help you with the building. And we had a four to five year building plan. So we didn't do everything at once. We did it over a period of time. John's situation is fairly unique. So I put the same question to Ian to see how he tackled the problem. And just to advise that throughout this program, all demonstrations were carried out using clean cans and water to mitigate the causes of point source contamination. We've converted a barn, so we've made it put a bund to prevent any spillage straight away. So the whole barn is in effect the spray store. We worked it all out with the Environment Agency and it's approximately 8,000 litres that we could actually spill before it leaked out the store so we're well over and above whatever we needed to be. The next part of it is planning and preparation so that actually starts when the chemical arrives so I'm lucky I've got a very good relationship with Hutchinson's uh, my specific supplier. Um, they've got a really good app so it texts me when the delivery driver is a couple of minutes away and if I'm about I can actually be here to help the delivery driver and then as I'm helping him unload I try to have a conversation with him to make him feel part of the team to, so he can understand what I'm trying to do. Um, so when he turns up, if I'm not here and he turns up, he'll put the products where I want them to save double handle them. One of the things we've done is we've gone to a big roller shutter door so you can drive a machine straight through so that when we order products, we can have them on a pallet or as we've got behind us in an IBC. So we can just unload it with a JCB or if no one's around, we can unload it with a sack truck and then I can wheel it around in here. So it's convenient and easy and we can deal with it from there. We've got a remote control blip. So as I approach, I can press the remote control button 
and the door will open. And then when I leave, I can press the button so that the door will shut behind me as I leave. It means that it's a time saving and time saving when you're spraying is crucial. And also the other side of that is I'm not getting in and out of sprayer. It's reducing the potential contamination that I can have by touching the outside of the sprayer. To mitigate the causes of point source contamination within the store, both Ian and John implemented similar measures. First, let's hear from John on the solution and then Ian on dealing with park containers. To start off, this was a standard steel chemical store. And then once we had it, we realized it didn't quite suit our purposes to how it was built. So we changed the way we use it. We've got the outdoors for chemicals to come into in and out to the sprayer over the bunded area. So the chemicals, once they come in, they're never in a non-bunded area. They come in on a separate door at the end of the store to the one they go out. So the delivery vehicle doesn't have to drive into the bunded area. So the chemicals are on a one-way system. They come in through one door. It's a double door, so we can put them in on a pallet if we need to. And then they go out by another door. As they come in, they go into one stack on the corner on one pallet, on a plastic pallet. And there is clearly labelled goods in with a big sign. Then I can take the chemicals from that pallet, stack them in the store, take that ticket and go and enter it on the farm gatekeeper computer. So all the chemicals are stored off the ground. Powders above liquids. If there's no powders, you can just stack the liquids all the way straight up. And then we keep them as much as we can together. Then the, as we go along, when we have park containers, like that one there, we've got a liberator there, and it's got one and a half litres on it. We write one and a half litres on it on the actual container. It's not so much on these ones because they're translucent. You can see through them. But when you get some of the ones which are solid plastic like that, it just helps minimise mistakes, thinking you've got a full five litres, and so you're allowed for that when you go and order. And then when you go to pick it up the day you put it on, you find, oh, there's only half a litre in the bottom, and then you're in the proverbial. Because we're in a class one soil protection zone, our bunded area has to be 185%. So I've worked out the bunded area of this store, which works out at 3,000 litres capacity. So for ag, to make things easier, we've got a sign on the side there that says, Bun capacity 3,000 litres, store capacity 1,500 litres. Then we've got the eye wash, first aid, spill kit, and then we've got other things for information that are handy, all the different types of buffer zones that are, are applicable to us in this situation. What have you got in your spill kit? And if you had a spillage, what would you do? Spill kit is very simple, really. It's a bucket and it's full of sand, got some plastic bags and a zip tie. And so if you have a spill, the first thing to do, if you can, is whatever's spilling, stop the leak. So if it's a container that's knocked over, you pick it back up. The first thing to do is stop the leak going out. Then you contain it, put the sand around it, and then you contain it. Then you see about how you're going to clean it up. To do that, obviously on the tractor, we carry a spade anyway, so we don't need to actually put one in the store here. And then put that in the bag, zip tied shut, then you've got to decide what you're going to do with it. And the only logical answer is poo in a food waste contractor. Planning beforehand can actually reduce any potential risks or anything going wrong. Because when the chemicals are ordered, whether somebody's ordering 4 litres or something, or 40 litres or 400 litres or something, the person at the end of the phone isn't going to blink if you've made a mistake, because they just think that's normal. So what we're trying to do is minimise the risk of anything going wrong. So we all know what it's like when you're under pressure, you're waiting for a decent fine spraying day and it's raining outside and you know when you're going to get going, you've got to be a slick operation. So a good simple way I've found to do it is come in and prep your loads. So work out what's going to actually go in what tank or what field and work your way through the system. And if by the end, when you get to the end, by planning it out, the chemical works out right, happy days. If it works out you've got five or ten litres left over or you're five or ten litres short, something's obviously gone wrong, somebody's got the maths gone wrong or whatever, but it can eat, anybody can make mistakes. The whole thing is there's got to be two things in place to, so if one thing makes a mistake something else picks up the mistake and what we're trying to do is minimise the potential risk of things going wrong. So a simple way of what I will do, I'll lay them out like this in a 
in my own simple mind, this works quite well. So if I'm working out by field or by load, if it's a whole container going to go into a load, I put the containers that way. If it's going to be split with the next load, I put the container that way. So therefore, you can say on this scenario, we're going to want, say, for instance, 12 and a half litres of a product. So you can put five litres or five litres, that one's going to be split, put it, put it crossways. That's going to go with the next load, so that will go with that one, with that five litres and that five litres, say 12 and a half litres. So that's a very simple way of prepping the, your, your, your work out for the day. And then once it's all done, it can all be packed away. You know you've got the right product. Everything's going to actually fall into the right scenario. How do you know what's left in parked containers? One of the things that I do is I've got a Sharpie that I write on the top of the lids because then as you take another chemical out, you've just got the one number on the top of a lid. And then with an IBC, I write how much I've taken out each time and then I keep a total of what's left in the IBC so for stock checks and so that we don't run out, well, I know what we've got in stock at all times.